Hi, this is Andrew Collier from CollierMusic.com and today is another main stage tutorial about how to build your library of patches in main stage. So right now I have, this is a window for to look at your recent concerts. So this has to do with the progressive metal band Awaken. Here's my modern cinematic progressive rock band Circuline. This is when I performed on the cruise The Edge. This is with the band Cell 15, another awesome modern progressive rock band. Here's from one of the Ryan Atkinson tour in the spring of 2017. So let's, uh, for this demo, let's open the Awaken concert. So you can double click on that or you can select that and then click the choose button. So while this is loading, I just want to say I'm doing this video because after the first video, or after the last video, I had some questions. Uh, some people thought that I went too fast on that last video. And uh, I went really fast because a lot of people have, I've seen comments in the past where people say, hey, don't take so long, get to the point, and, you know, get after it. So today we're going to go a little bit more slowly in case you're following along at home so that you'll be able to uh, hopefully follow along a little bit better. So right now, here's Main Stage 3. And this, as I showed you guys last time, when we're building your library of patches, what I prefer to do is have a library of patches in the upper left-hand part of this patch list here. And these folders, which Main Stage calls a set, I use as folders for my patches that I'm going to use for that particular set, that particular concert, like I just showed you there in the introduction. And I have many different concerts. See where it says dot .concert? That's what Main Stage calls the file for the entire thing here as a concert. I have lots of different concerts um, for different bands or different projects or whatnot. So the top half of the patch list are the patches from the individual, the individual uh, plug-in instruments that I'm using. And then see here, I, ha I make a folder here that's completely empty and it reads separate patches from songs. And then down here in the bottom half where I'm actually building this new live set list I'm working on with Awaken for right now. Uh, the actual songs ha have their own their own entire set of patches that I will step through throughout the concert. So there's you know all these different uh, here you can see these are the patches that I step through. Now for some people, the way that I used to perform with my Muse receptor, the way that my buddy Dave Med from the Tubes performs. Um, and actually, uh, yeah, I don't have anything loaded there yet. Um, you know, the, what, what Dave is performing, he sets up all of his patches to have one setup for the entire song. So anyway, I'm let me let me. Uh, what, a couple things we're going to demonstrate today is this new synthesizer. It's new for me. It's called Synthmaster. It's been out a couple of years. Um, Synthmaster is an awesome awesome synth and I met these guys at NAMM and I had heard about it and I had read about it uh, and I'm now a sponsored artist with Synthmaster so there's a complete uh, uh, complete disclosure full disclosure there so uh, what I just did was because I didn't have any Synthmaster patches yet in this concert is I went to my patch list and I clicked that button here, the cog wheel, and I clicked on new set. And that opened a folder here, put a new folder here, set folder. And then I, you can click on it, you can hit return. Here, I'll even tell you what, I'll even delete it and I'll show you, I'll show you again. Click the cog wheel, new set. This is for a synthesizer or a plugin that you haven't started inserting any patches yet. So I'm going to click on it once. Or I could have hit the return key, and I'm going to type synth master patches. All right, now let's say we're going to build some patches, and this is brand new. I have no patches in here, so the so you have to have a patch on the left side of the patch list, and then you have to have channel strips over here on the right side, where it reads channel strips. So I'm going to click insert. You can either click new patch. I'll do that first, or if you click the plus button right here, that will insert a new patch. But then you have to insert the channel strips over here, which you'll either hit a plus sign, new channel strip. 
So let's, what we'll do is I'll give you a, an example where you just do it one at a time, and then I'll show you how you can do it at the same time. It saves a little bit of time, a few seconds here and there. So again, we covered this in the last video. We'll cover it here again. An audio, I don't want an audio channel strip. An audio channel strip over here means I'm going to have a microphone or a guitar for an input, which I'm not doing right now. Instrument is the one we're going to be using. External instrument means an external piece of MIDI hardware. That's why they hit, you have MIDI options here. That could be a Muse receptor, that could be a sound module, that could be an, an external keyboard, that could be anything that's going to be an external sound that's going to be controlled with MIDI data for main stage sending to control that. We're not doing that right now. Auxiliary, it to me is very similar to audio. I can't really tell a difference, but maybe it's the way things are processed or whatnot. I'm not really sure. But we're going to use instrument because I'm going to use a software instrument, so we always select this instrument uh, radio button here. You click create. So there it inserted the channel strips for us over here on the right. And I'm going to go down here to instrument. Instrument right there. Click that button. Now, this list of instruments right here are all the software synths that come custom in main stage. When you come down here to AU instruments, here's a list of all of the other software instruments that I have loaded or that you will have loaded. So everything from Apple, Arturia, got the V collection, here's my East West with Play, well with Play you just open the Play engine and then you've got all the other things inside of that. IK Multimedia, here's all the stuff I have from them. Uh, actually, by the way, I don't. Uh, I have Syntronic, but I don't have it loaded on this system yet. I'm actually building a new system, and you'll see that in some future videos. Korg, Software M1 WaveStation, KB331 Audio. There's SynthMaster, which we're gonna uh, we're gonna come back to that in a second. Native Instruments. I have Complete. There's a Roly. There's Spectrosonics. Uh, there's Omnisphere. We're gonna come back to that in a minute. I also have the other Spectrosonics instruments, but they're not loaded on this particular system. I have several computer systems. Synthogy for the Ivory, and UVI Workstation, which I've got a whole bunch of things inside of that. So for this one, because I'm, I'm, uh, we're, we're using a SynthMaster patch, we're going to go KB331 Audio, SynthMaster, Stereo, Select. So basically what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to insert a patch on the left side for every sound that you like. So let's say we've got... Um, Okay, let's pick a lead sound, and let's just grab, I don't know, I, I, I'm building a library here, so I'm going to have to audition and check out these sounds before I even know what I want to use. So if I double click that, or I double click this, now, why is my MIDI, uh, for some reason my MIDI keyboard is not connected here. So um, let's turn that off. You know what? We can continue the demo without that. I'll just go to here because you can use the mouse right here. Okay, so that's kind of a cool arpeggiator, right? So if I, if when you when when you click away from the GUI, the user interface for the software synth, even if I was playing the keys on my MIDI keyboard. Here, let's say that I like that patch, okay, and that's called ARP Butter. What I would do, and I want to use that in my concert, in my set list here. I'm going to close that, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to name this. Uh, I'm going to call it SM for Synth Master ARP Butter. So that's going to save that patch over here. Now, you know what? I'm not going to go take the time right now to go through uh, some of the the other naming and the logo, uh, the uh, icons and all that stuff. You guys should watch the other video for that. Let's just say that I like that patch. So that's going to be held here in my Synth Master Patches folder to use later down here in the songs. So I'm like, okay, I got that one. But I, but I love Synth Master and I want to use more Synth Master Patches. So now, let's delete that one. Second. So now I have to insert another patch here so I can, so this one is saved to be ready to use below. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click new. Instead of using the plus button to insert the patch and then having to go over here and use the plus button to insert a channel strip, if I go to new patch with channel strip, it's going to insert the patch there and stick the channel strip over on the right side at the same time. Now I don't really have a name for this, 
So right now I'm going to leave it on instrument because I'm inserting a software instrument. I'm going to click create and it'll just remain in, with a blank name until I name it something else. So I have to go back over here. I'm going to go back to instruments. Remember I clicked, I'm in the channel strip. I click instrument. I scroll down. I'm going to pick the same instrument again that I just selected. It's going to instantiate it again. Let's pick an organ patch this time. Let's check out the, let's say I need to choose an organ. All right, so the things that have the word or for organ, let's try this hard rock organ. Oh, Notre Dame organ. Let's try hard rock organ. Okay, how's that sound? Okay, fine. Let's say I like that organ sound and I want to use it. If I don't like it, I'm going to click on here. And obviously, I'm not sure, I'm not doing troubleshooting on why my MIDI keyboard's not happening here this morning. So, um, I'll perhaps do a reset on something, but I don't want to stop this video. So let's say, ah, oh, that organ is okay. Let me see what other organ they have. Uh, list. What is this Notre Dame organ? What's that? Click that. Now let's try that. Oh, that's a big church organ. That sounds great. You know what? Let's. I'm going to keep that one. So what's the name of that? That's called O R Notre Dame B T. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click it twice to select it, SM First Synth Master, and that was OR for organ. What was that? I don't remember that already. What is that called? Notre Dame BT, whatever that means. OR, OR, Notre Dame BT. So that's that church organ. And what, what you'll do is you'll go through, find all the patches that you like that you're going to use for this particular set list, for this band, for this concert, for this recording session, whatever. And this is time consuming, but it's what gives you, the artist, your palette of sounds that you're going to use for this particular project. All right, so let's close that. And you would do this for everything that you like in this particular soft synth. All right, now, remember in the last video, if you go up here in the upper left-hand corner, see how this red radio button has got a black dot in the middle of it? That means that you've made changes to your concert that you need to save, and you want to save often and save frequently. So you can go to File, Save, or see how this shows you the Command S? I'm gonna click the Save, because I'm right there, and they're saving, and then see how the red button is, the, the red, uh, button is back to clear like the yellow and the green one. That means that everything you've done is saved. Now, let's go over and check our memory right now because I've got a lot of stuff going on in here. If I expand all these, there's really patches, there's my Omnisphere patches, there's all my main stage patches, here's all my contact patches, Kronos, I, I have a Korg Kronos and I use that as an external instrument. So if I want to use the audio or all the onboard sounds from a Kronos, I have that inserted here. AC, if, if I have AC in front of it, these are things that I have custom programmed myself. And then here's some more custom patches that I've done. I, use, I do a lot of custom programming within Omnisphere because it has I can, I can stack and layer and program up to eight instruments at a time. So let's go over here. Let's just say we're going to look at some of the factory. We're building our factory library um, custom set that we're going to use for this particular concert. So as you can see, I already have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's an untitled. So I have a good solid 15 different patches from Omnisphere that I'm using. So what you would do is just, as before, let me go through a couple of these. Uh, here's an Omni English choir. It sounds like this. Beautiful. Here's, um, let's go here to fast legato strings. Yeah, it's got a fast attack on it. And you know, it's a shame that you can't really tell how awesome it sounds on these little speakers that are, you know, routing back through this video, but I highly suggest that you get Omnisphere. Power strings. Sounds great. Um, anyway, I could, I could stay here all day, but you can find somebody else to demonstrate all the Omnisphere's cool patches to you. However, my point is, you see how I've got all these patches stacked up because I've done the process I just showed you. Here's untitled. Now see, here's, an, here's a patch. So what I had done was I either clicked the plus button right here to insert that patch, or I clicked on the cog wheel to insert a new patch, but I don't have a channel strip over here on the right. So there's an untitled patch. I've got to go over here and insert a channel strip because that's where the audio is going to route through. Leave it on instrument. 
click create and there's nothing there so I'm going to click instrument I'm going to scroll down I'm going to go over here to spectrosonics and click omnisphere stereo and here comes omnisphere so what you'll do is click this is kind of some of the parameters this is how it loads it always comes up with default and default so if I click anywhere in here, if I click that folder, if I click the word default, it takes me to the patch browser. So this is how you find your patches that you're going to start auditioning in Omnisphere. Now what's kind of cool is this is how it loaded. I'm just going to click cross beat over driver. The first thing, I have no idea what this sounds like, but you can click this plus button. Like I don't, my, again, as you saw before, my mini keyboard is not there, but I don't need it because I can click the plus button. Right there. That's groovy. So if I click Adagio Transparent Strings Warm, hit the play button. Beautiful. In fact, do I have that one already over here? I don't, but I like it. So if I, let's say that I love that string. Now it's Adagio Transparent Strings Warm. I'm going to hit that button. That's beautiful. Let's say I'm just going to keep that. And I'm not going to get any kind of multi things, but you can layer with the multi function, you can layer up to eight instruments in Omnisphere. And I do that a lot with my custom programming. Um, or not that's beyond the scope of this video so let's say I like that one that's beautiful I want to use that for this particular project or co concert so I'm gonna go over here this is how I do it I'm gonna hit the uh, I clicked on this once I'm gonna hit return and I'm gonna I'm gonna call it Omni what was the name of that Omni Adagio transparent strings warm Omni Adagio trans strings warm and I hit return now I will take a moment to show you how I did the icons even though you should watch this in the other video you know what I'm not you know what watch the other video because I want to get to the li library building part of this so I like that so I'm keeping it so there we go now I want to keep seeing what else is in Omnisphere that I might want to use for this concert now keep an eye up here see where this is memory here's your CPU load but right now the memory here I gotta move my uh, recording software out of the way here. Memory here shows that I'm using about 67% of the memory here, but with all these patches I have loaded, and I don't even have my songs built yet. So you can get up to about 75% total on your CPU load. So just kind of keep that in mind. I do have 16 gigs of RAM, but I got a lot of stuff loaded over here on the left. But that's just how we work. So let's go back over here to Omnisphere. I'm going to click insert the cog. I'm going to click insert new patch with channel strip. I'm not going to need to name it anything because I'm going to rename it anyway as soon as I find a patch. All right, I'm going to go over here to my channel strip. I'm going to click instrument, scroll down to IU instruments, uh, spectrosonics, atmosphere, stereo. It's going to open. It always opens to the default, which is nothing really here. In fact, Let's hear what the default sounds like. There's a play button right here. So there's your default sound. That's less than desirable. So let's say now in the patch browser, and I was just using whatever was under all that opened up. So let's say I, I want to find a lead synth sound. Okay, let's try, um, I start with the category over here on the left. Synth bass, synth mono. Synth, let's try synth mono. And let's go over here and let's say here's an analog classic to the next thing. Uh, let's try old school. Uh, okay, and that's the complexity. We'll just leave that for now. Okay, I like what's Happy Gaga lead? What is that? I'm gonna select that. You know what? That sounds kind of like a Keith Emerson thing that I could probably use for Lucky Man. How about uh, Authentic Triangle lead? Okay, Moog Modular Overloadio. What is that? Now another thing that's cool is, see these up and down buttons? I'm just going to go down, play. That sounds bad. Uh, badass is what I was going to say. It sounds badass, not bad. If I click the down arrow, play. Oh, some kind of percussive type thing. Down arrow, play. That sounds great too. Dark and unstable square. I'm going to click down twice for that one. Okay, let's. Um, what is, 
Got this soaring edge, that was kind of cool. I need something, uh, I need something, let's see. Stay with the Gaga, that was good. All right, so there we go. Happy Gaga lead. I'm gonna close this, go over here, select this, hit the return button, Omni, Happy, Gaga, lead, return. There you go. So now I'm building my patch library for Omnisphere here. All right, so you'll need to do that for all the software synths that you have and just keep an eye on the memory over time when you get, you know, here's a bunch of custom stuff that's stacked up and then custom patches for that particular band and then contact and then main stage. I use a lot of main stage sounds. There's Omnisphere, I got a bunch of Omnisphere stuff. Rolly, and there's, I've started my synth master stuff, and here's where I've started building the songs down here. So, over time, what you may have to do is delete some of these if you wind up not using them with this concert because they're going to take up too much memory. So let's go over here and do Command S to save. We're a little over 20 minutes, and that's enough for this video. Start building your patch library with the software synths that you have in main stage. I'm Andrew Collier from CollierMusic.com. Thanks for watching. We're going to be doing a lot more of these videos. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.